All right, take your seats. All right, open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 23. I'm going to speak about some very interesting things. Give a few principles, and I feel uh, there's coming a, a tremendous breakthrough of the miraculous. Proverbs chapter 23, I want to start with a very interesting point. Because if you want to go higher, now, please, I hope everybody can understand this. So I, I kind of go into deep waters, you know, and then people wonder, like, wow, prophet, you know. Uh, but I can't help myself, you know? I can't help myself. When I go everywhere, I see things the way God wants them, and we want to see them arranged, you know, the way that the Lord wants. And uh, if you want certain things, you have to... Um, how can I say? Hi, baby. Jumbo. Okay, you stay right there and look at me, my friend. Hallelujah. I want to share a few things. I want to drop some things here. Uh, instructions from the Lord are very important for you to chart your course to where you need to get to. Make a mental note of this or write it down. Instructions. Now, can we talk, can we talk some real business here? Are you people serious? You sang yourself too much already, and you're not, you're not switched on. You know, can I tell you something? You only want to do in life, you only want to do in life what the Lord is instructing you to do. Can I teach for 30 minutes and go? Lift your hands. Can I do it? Because I, you know, I don't. I'm not like a, a person to, like, try to pump everybody up and act like, you know, we have to have the PR session, public relations and all that. I just want to get right to what God wants. Can you hear? Lay your hands on your head. I think I'm, I think I'm having it. Uh, okay, I think I'm going to have a, we're going to have a great result of this. I feel it. I feel it already. Lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, please clear out the, clear out the clutter out of my mind. <laughs> clear out everything wrong out of my head. And put your hands on your heart and say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. I wanted to speak about miracles and the Holy Ghost power, you know, moving in a generation. And I really feel that's coming. But before, maybe I'll do that in a minute. But before I do, I want to talk about this word called instructions. Write it down, instructions. Do you know how to spell it? I-N-S-T-R-U-C-T-I-O-N-S. Instructions. You must know the formula if you're going to make something. You must have the key if you're going to open the door. Yes? You must have the right way of doing something if you're going to get the right result. Right? So the Lord uh, has ways that he moves. And talking about the miraculous, I'm reminded of a friend, uh, uh, Pastor Benny Hinn. That he has everything set up in a way that's a there's a flow and a pattern, and I see also that Robert Kayanja, uh, a great general in the nation of Uganda, has kind of has some of the same ways. You know, I don't know. I think he, maybe he caught some something from the connection, but like everything has to be set right. Everything has to be done in a certain way. Everything has to be arranged correctly. Everything has to be very good, and then he can flow. You know. So there's a way that you get God to come. And the main thing about Benny Hinn, and I'll say his name because he's, he's anointed, you know, regardless of what anybody thinks or wants to say or don't say, Benny Hinn is anointed. I have been with him for years in many places, and I'm telling you the presence of heaven will come into the place. But everything is organized. Everything is following a certain pattern. And then they do worship that the Holy Spirit likes. Lift your hands right now. You have to find the music that the Holy Spirit likes. Not your breakthrough song. That's good. You know, the ones that make us move like this is okay. Good. Do a few of those. But find something. And I feel the anointing right now moving, speaking here. It's just like coming like a wave. It happens everywhere I go. It's just coming right now because... 
the, the, the Lord is right here in me, and he's bringing forth his word, and that's what he's on. You want to find what God is giving for us to do. Some of us don't know, and it's sad, you know? So I, feel, I felt while I was sitting here for a minute, oh, I, I felt while I was sitting here for a minute, I just had this one thought. I, I had this one thought that I'm going to train people to really flow in the ways of God. Lift your hands. Oh, my God. I, I, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm gonna, I am going to do that. God complained that Job's friends, they're talking too, too much nonsense. Why, who are you to tell me? I'm God, and this is my servant Job. And you have all your opinions about his issues and all that. Even his wife was crazy. She was, she was not okay. She said, curse God and die. Well, what became of her? I'm sure she wasn't blessed. The Bible says that God gave Job new daughters, new wealth, new things, new family, new treasures. He got blessed. But the Bible never talks about that woman that said, curse God and die. You don't hear about her again. Remember Lot's wife, Jesus said. Remember Lot's wife, right? When Abraham went this way and Lot went that way and the wife wanted to stay back in the sinful place, and she was turned into a pillar of salt right in the Dead Sea. I was swimming in the Dead Sea. I was there in Israel, in Jeru in, uh, outside of uh, Jerusalem. I was there in the Dead Sea, and they have the pillars of salt in the middle of the Dead Sea that stand up. And I felt an eerie, strange feeling in the, in the, in the spirit, in the atmosphere while I was swimming. You need to be very careful in that water because it's so thick with minerals and salt if you get it in your eyes, it'll burn. If you, even one drop got on my tongue and it made like an electrical uh, static feeling. I was like, this water is... Uh... And it kills everything. The Dead Sea, that's why they call it the Dead Sea. Nothing can live there. And it's below sea level. It's a very funny place, very strange place. But there is where these pillars of salt are. And I thought to myself, is one of these pillars Lot's wife? I think it might be the case. Say praise the Lord. Amen. Lot's wife, I think she's there for thousands of years. And like in, in her body is there as a salt pillar. Why? Because she was a foolish woman. She, want, she didn't know when to move. She didn't know when to go. And a lot of people get in situations like that. They don't know when to move. Can I teach or not? Praise the Lord. Say amen, somebody. And the Lord said, the Lord, you know, gave Abraham instructions, and Abraham got very blessed, yes? Lot didn't get so blessed, and his wife definitely didn't get blessed. When the fire fell in Sodom and Gomorrah, she was turned into a pillar of salt. And let me tell you, if that judgment came and she was standing in the middle of that, I would dare say she's not in heaven today. She's probably off with all the sinners and all the rebels, you know what I mean? So, but where's Abraham? He's one of the generals. He's one of the four and 20 elders, yes? He's in heaven's glory forever. Why? Why? Because he knew, because he heard God, and when God spoke, he obeyed him and began to move. So, number one, know the plan of God for you. Write it down. What is the plan? What is, what is God's plan? What is my plan? And I'll tell you something amazing. That I myself really know what God has given me to do. And that's a blessed place to be. I don't say that to be like uh, proud. I wouldn't say it in that way. I'm very humbled that God talks to me the way he does. But I'm very clear. I have real clarity from him on what I'm supposed to be doing. And I know what I'm doing. Now the, now the job is to get it done. And you want to get things done, now you need the right people. You need the right environment. You need the right everything. Amen? Amen? But while I'm on it, what I wanted to talk about, what you want to entertain the Holy Spirit, you have to create a good atmosphere for him. First of all, you have to get into the word. You have to learn the word. Yes. And then you have to uh, set your life up that the presence of God can come. And you also have to be with people that... Are anointed too. 
Then you'll feel like you, you went to heaven on the earth. Lift your hands. Say, I'm with the wrong people most of the time, but Lord, forgive me and get rid of them and take me to the right people. That was a quick prayer. Can you say it? Can you say it after me? Say, Lord, I'm sorry for being with the wrong people. Take me out. Get rid of them. And I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to move on. Find the people that are heavenly. And many people that are brilliant. That really have substance of great thought in, their, in them. They have substance of great thought in them going on. They're brilliant people. These are going to be my friends. Because if you run with a winner, you're going to win. If, you, if you're a winner, but you run with a loser, the loser is going to make you lose a little bit. Whatever environment you're in is going to affect you one way or the other. Now, let me read this verse of scripture, which is a really wild verse. Proverbs 23, verse 1, it says, When you sit down and eat with a ruler, a king, a high-level dignitary, be very careful. Now, it talks about your appetite, what you're going to eat and all that. That's, that's just one expression that Solomon gave. But I want to say there's a principle here. Be very careful how you conduct yourself. Be observing. Don't be loud. Don't do things that are, are, are untoward to the environment. Go into a high-level environment and learn from it. I would tell you all up here, and you, even if you have to take a public bus and spend a few hundred shillings or whatever, no money at all, and go to a five-star hotel and order a soda. You say, oh, I, I don't know if I can afford that kind of place. Well, order a Stony or a Fanta Orange. What's wrong with you? You don't have to buy something that costs 5000 or 3000 Buy a soda that costs 300 shillings, 200, 300 shillings. Lift your hands. Hit yourself in the head and say, what's wrong with me? Help me, Jesus. Dr. Jesus sent me his prophet today to help us. And go sit in the environment and be quiet. And don't make noise. And look around and observe. And then maybe ask questions of people. If you meet somebody good, get their phone number and say, wow, you're a great person. I'd like to know you. And change your environment. So I just get, See, some people say, well, this is great for the preacher or the pastor to say or the prophet to say uh, in this message. But how am I going to do it? How am I going to change my environment? There's a way. You just have to decide to do it. Everything you want to climb higher is available. But if you're at a certain level, come on, somebody. I feel like you're dropping on me. Come on. Wave your hands and say, praise the Lord. Act like, tell me you're alive. Show me. Yeah, for real. Whatever level you're at, you got there. Now it's time to step up and go to another level. Lift your hands. I mean, a higher place, a greater life. How many, how many want that? Some people, now you, have, you first have to say, God, I can't stay where I am. I can't take it anymore. Please. I've been praying. I, prayed the, I haven't slept. I prayed the whole night. You don't know me. I went to sleep for an hour or two at 7 o'clock when the sun was already up. I missed the sunrise. I didn't care. I saw this, the light coming through the windows. I said, oh, my God. Usually I go to see the sky because I'm going to have a penthouse. I'm looking way over the city. I like to go see what the colors of the clouds are. Today I was like, ha, I don't even care. I, just, I need to sleep for an hour, please. Yeah, and, uh, and I was praying, you know, praying, 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 and meditating on things and praying. And then in the morning I, I just slept an hour and woke up, and I said, Lord, uh, I the Blah, 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 blah. I won't tell you what I said, okay? It's my business between me and him. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. It's my private, uh, my private discussion. But <laughs> you, you need to talk to God about your life. One thing about the Holy Spirit, I'll tell you, he's a conversationalist. He loves to talk. Prayer is not supposed to be a two-way street I mean, a one-way street that I just give my list of things that I'm crying to God for. But it's also a conversation. Write this down. Prayer is supposed to be an active conversation. I talk to him, and he talks to me. And then I ask him a question. 
And then if he doesn't want to answer the questions, because sometimes you ask God a question, he doesn't want to answer it right then. And that's his business. That's his, his right. He's, he's the boss. But he'll begin to show you things, and you'll get impressions and ideas of what to do next in your life. You could ask God, what about this? He may answer, he may not answer, but then the day will come when you're standing there and you weren't waiting for any answer for something, and he, he just begins to speak. It happened to me today. Uh, you're looking at a very blessed man. Uh, it happened to me today. The Lord spoke to me the most astounding thing. And don't ask what it was. I'll never tell you. I'll never say it on the microphone. I won't even tell anybody privately. I won't. It's a very, very huge thing, and it's my business and his business. And the Lord spoke to me, visited me, and spoke to me this morning. Yeah, that's an answer. I had asked before, and he began to show me some things, but then when you least expect it sometimes, God will come and tell you what it is you need to know. Ukosawa. Yes or no? Yes. Very disturbing, the lack of hunger for revelation. You want to know God. You have to hunger for his word. You have to hunger for his voice. Lift your hands. You have to hunger for his wisdom. You have to hunger to change your life. You, you shouldn't want to stay the same. You shouldn't sit somewhere. I, we, we were driving here, and we pulled in the next road by the school, and we asked some big lady came out the gate like this. And she looked all, you know. And I said, where's the church? She's like, I don't know. I thought, it's right, up, it's right next to you. You don't even see it. Typical example. Bad attitude. Talking to me like that. I just smiled and said, hallelujah. Okay, I'll find it myself. And I was asking the little kids. I wanted to engage their minds. Like, hey, baby, little girl, little boy, where's the church? Where's the tent? They look like nervous, you know. I wanted to talk to I, the adult. I left uh, that one alone. But I said, I want to talk to the babies a little bit. Hey, think about it. It's a white tent. Have you seen it? They might go, oh, yeah, it's right over there. See, children are, children are more smart than we know. I think God is going to go after the young people in our day. Praise the Lord. He's going to go after the babies. He's going to train them up and raise them up. That they don't have to be affected by the environment the way people have been so uh, enslaved by the bad environments. Lift your hands and say, I'm coming out. <laughs> Lift your hands again and say, I'm coming out. Hit your neighbor next to you and say, hey, you're coming out. Everything's going to change for the better. And God is really waiting for us to get hungry for that. God is waiting for you. Tell your neighbor, God is waiting for you. Someone says, I'm waiting on the Lord. For what? He's already ready. God is ready with everything. He's already done everything. Jesus, 2,000 years ago, gave us the victory on Calvary. Salvation was done. His resurrection power brings deliverance and healing and fire to the world. So, I mean, well, what else does he have to do? He's at the right hand of God, even praying for us. And we think we're waiting on God. God stands like this many times and looks at people and just goes, huh, hmm. I'm waiting. You know, even the scripture says he has great patience to wait for the harvest. Thank God he has great patience with us or else we'd all be in hell. <laughs> if God got too mad at us, it wouldn't be good for us. Lift your hands and thank him for his mercy. But I don't preach about mercy. I lift your hands and thank him for his mercy. I like to do that for a few seconds. But I, I don't preach about mercy. I don't preach about grace. I don't, I don't understand those things, Okay. I understand, I thank God that we have it, but I want to preach more about faith to believe for big things, for principles of life on how we can move to the next dimension, what we can actually do to move on with the purpose that God has. If you keep talking about his mercy all day, uh, you're just going to do nothing. It'll make you lazy. Well, I can do whatever I want. God understands it is how it is, and he's going to have mercy on me. Oh, boy, that's a really arrogant prayer from a poor person. Hello. Look at your neighbor and say, how much money you got? How rich are you? 
Some people are so poor they can't even pay attention. They can't pay for anything and they can't even pay attention. Even their mind isn't clear. That's wrong. Proverbs said the rich man has many friends, but the poor man, even his neighbor, hates him. People, ha people don't respect the poor. Lift your hands and say, I'm going to be rich. Let me prophesy. Yeah, I'm going to be rich. I have to be. I need money. I need everything good in this world. I got to have everything good in my life. And yes, I'm going to have it. Say, I'm going to have it. But how is it going to happen? You got to walk. Number one, right? You getting this? This is, this is powerful, yes? Number one, what's the plan? What's the plan that God has? Say it. What's the plan? Say, what's up? Yesterday, I was in a very uh, high-end, uh, was it yesterday? No, it was Friday. I was in a very high-end uh, uh, complex, very luxurious place. This lady walked in, and she had these two beautiful girls. And uh, the little girls stopped and just looked at me. They stopped and just were staring at me. I smiled at them. I said, hey, baby, what's up? So the little one went, and the mother's standing there shocked, like, why my daughters stop to look at this man and talk to him? Why? We, talk, we don't know each other. So I said to the little girl, what's up? So she went like this, and she went back next to a statue like this. And she put her hands like this, and she went, hmm. About a seven- or eight-year-old girl, about an eight-year-old girl, little girl. She went, hmm, and said, why do you say what's up? Why did he say what's up? And she's walking, telling everybody, what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> and her mother's, like, her mother's like, whoa. I had, a, I had such an effect on that child. Lift your hands. We need to have a great effect on people. Can I tell you, the mother, oh, I, I would pray for her because now her daughter's going to be saying what's up every day. What's up? What's up? I learned that from that man. What's up? We should say that to everybody. What's up? Say it to ourselves. What's up? What's Ask yourself, what's up? what's up? If you don't analyze yourself and ask yourself questions about where you're supposed to get to, your life is going to stay where it is. And I hate to tell you that because some people try to believe differently, but we have to believe the Bible. Some people believe different, try to believe differently. No, things are just the way the Bible says. Ask, seek, and knock, and you'll be answered, you will find, and the door will be open to you. Move in aggressive power, and you will take conquest and take a new place. Walk in the power of dominion, and things will begin to be changed for the better for you. Lift your hands. If you, but if you stay, then even God won't change it for you because he gave us the power to decide what it is is going to happen in our life. I have to tell you something really amazing. God will not make everything work for you. No amens. You don't like that. Somebody told you different. They lied to you. I came to tell the truth. John 8, 32. Jesus said, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Lift your hand and say, I need to know the truth. And the truth will make me free. It doesn't set you free. It's a different word there. It says makes you. It makes you free. It makes you a person that you were not before. It changes you into something for the better. And God, let me tell you something about God. He won't do the work for us. He gave us the power to do the work. He gave us the power to make decisions. But we have to make those decisions. But he will give us the grace and the power, and he'll direct us along the way. We start to walk. He'll say, this is the way. Walk in it. You know the scripture? And the steps of a good person are ordered of the Lord. And I will help you. I will hold you by your right hand 
Isaiah 41, I will, I will take you. You'll be in the palm of my hand. Praise God. I said, praise God. Psalm 27. I'll say it again. Praise the Lord. I am in his light and in his salvation. So who should I fear or be afraid of? Nobody. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear or be afraid of? Nobody. No weapon, Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. And every word that's spoken against me, I take it and throw it back upon the sender. Praise the Lord. We are not consumers of evil. The ones that can, 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 uh, commit evil or whatever, they're the ones to eat of their own nonsense and evil. Not us. They throw it at us, it bounces back upon them. Are you seeing already that life is a forceful, aggressive path that we have to take? Lift your hands. You have to get up and walk. You have to get up and move. Yesterday, I was in another town in the city, right next to the city, a business district with a lot of uh, office buildings and all that. And I went to see the tallest building in Africa, and I stood on the top where the helipad is going to be, where the helicopters are going to land and it's the highest, it's the highest rooftop of any building on the African continent. It's right here in Nairobi. And many people don't know about it. And uh, it's a very expensive place, you know, and they're building it. But they took me to the top. The lift only went halfway. We had to take the hoist elevator all the way up. And they said, come stand on the top and look around. There's no other building. You see the whole wraparound of Nairobi. Now... It doesn't thrill me to have that for the price they're asking, but I had to see it for myself. Yeah. And then I got out of the building, and I was walking to another meeting nearby, and I thought, let me walk and just look at everything. And I was taking pictures with my phone of trees and buildings and office complexes. Why? I'm planning something for my future. I said, I, can, I don't need to stay in one place. I can get out and walk around on my feet and look at everything. Lift your hands. Get out and move and look. And don't look at the side of the road with all the dirty, the dirt and the buses and the, uh, the iron sheets places or some little shop or a bunch of people. Go somewhere beautiful. Go to a rich neighborhood and walk around say, and begin to prophesy. Say, I belong here. I'll preach about miracles in another session, but right now I got to do this. Is this all right? This is the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands right now. Praise the Lord. Are you getting this? When I say is it all right, I mean, is, are, you, are, you, are you ready to catch a hold of this? Don't stay where you've been. I have to tell you something really, really strange. And it's true. Because God will even leave you there. Someone said, oh, God, uh, is it merciful? Do you know what? When, when tragedy happens to people, some people get mad at God. and They say, how could God allow such a thing? We don't know. You know when I hear a tragedy happen to someone and they tell me about a tragedy they had? You know what I say? Before I even finish the conversation or the next sentence or I hang up the phone or whatever, I say, that will never happen to me. I also don't understand why it happened, but it will never happen to me. My friend, Dr. Miles Monroe, crashed. I was with him three weeks before he died here in Nairobi. I laid my hand. Uh, he, had, he had his uh, arm around me. I have a picture with him. And his last words to me were, he called me, I'm Thomas, but he calls me Tom. He said, Tom, uh, I'm going to send you a personal email to tell you when and where we can meet next privately. I said, thank you very much, Dr. Monroe. It's a great honor. And I will make arrangements to be with you. But never happened. As three weeks later, he was in heaven. His plane crashed. So what did I say? It was very devastating to a lot of people, and I, I was shocked. I was too shocked to myself about it. But the only thing I could say was, I don't understand. Actually, we found out why it happened. Lift your hands. You want to know why? Because they, he didn't listen to the weather control. There was a storm that hit the island, and all the planes were stopped. But he was in a hurry. He was in a hurry. I got to go. I got to go. Let's go. Let's go. He told him, go, 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 go. That was the last thing he ever got to do. All he had to do, it's very hard when you pack 
and you go to get to the plane and you're going to take off to go back home, you feel like you're being defeated. And I understand his mentality. He's a very aggressive guy. How did he become so famous and well-known as a teacher? Because he was aggressive. He pushed himself. He studied. He learned. He walked. He moved. You know? And then people know his name. Dr. Miles Monroe. He's a household name. My other friend, Dr. M.M., Dr. Mike Murdoch. Household name. Why? Very aggressive, very powerful, very full of faith, very diligent, hardworking. How did he become known? Through television. How did they get on television? Because they had great substance from the Lord to teach the people. If you have nothing to say, who's going to invite you to come and talk? So you have to get, you have to work on, our, I understand the principle, you have to work on ourselves. So there was a reason why that happened, but here's what I said. By faith and in the, prophetically, I prophesy my future. That will never happen to me. God, give me the grace. If there's a problem, there's danger ahead, please let me humble myself, even if I get mad, even if I hate it. Just all he had to do was turn around and go back to the house uh, and have a cup of tea or just relax and chill out a little bit and get over the mood of not being able to go. And then in the morning, wake up 5 o'clock. Let's go, boys, early. Get the jet. Let's go. And fly when the sun was coming up. The storm had already passed the next morning. He would still be with us today. So as, it's another way to look at this. As we're walking in uh, aggressive ways forward, we also have to be led by the Holy Spirit. Lift your hands and say, any place there's going to be danger, I'll never be there. Come on, prophesy to yourself. See, some people don't, you pray about everything else but the things that matter. And the Lord's having me say to the church these days, Pastor Isaac, we need to pray for ourselves. Did I talk about that in the, in, the, in the meeting in the city? I talked about that. By the way, next uh, Saturday, y'all are welcome to come down if you can. Come with, a, come with Pastor if you can come. Saturday, next Saturday, this coming Saturday, a week from yesterday prophetic meeting with prophets real prophets we're going to talk about the office of the prophet we're going to talk about the prophetic i'm going to be prophesying i'm going to be teaching some things eh? and uh, i'm sure we'll come again over here we'll do more in gong i like gong i feel something's happening in gong <laughs> prophetically something's being built in this area and god doesn't want it to be a dusty nonsense town he wants it to be a real business center with elegant things and beautiful places and, and you can have yourself a good house here. You don't have to live on a broken road way down there in some little horrible place. How many know God wants us to live in luxury? So as we're walking, we also need to be protected. As we're praying, we also need to pray for ourselves. Am I preaching good yet or not? Praise the Lord. We need to speak to ourselves. Concern yourself with yourself. Hit yourself, say, I got to take care of me. You're not responsible for somebody else, anybody else's life. You're responsible for you. When we stand before God, he's going to ask us about our life, and that's fearful to me. I, I'm afraid of that, by the way, because I'm sure that I have not gotten done everything I'm supposed to do. I'm sure of that. Like, I know my name is Thomas Manton IV. I know that I have not done everything I can do. Let me give you a prayer. 1 John 1, 9. Write this down. 1 John 1, 9. 1 John. Number one, epistle of John. Not the gospel of John, but the epistle. Uh, further on, close to the book of Revelation. 1 John 1 and 9 says, I confess, confess your sins to the Lord. And... Uh, he will forgive you of them, and he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. This is powerful. Now, sins are two things. Sins are things we did that we weren't supposed to do, and things are, sins are also things we were supposed to do that we didn't do yet. So we'll call that the sin of oh, commission, something done that wasn't right, and uh, in, in whatever way it is, or whatever, you know, sin means to miss the mark, meaning I had a perfect target, but I missed it. Huh? 
And the Bible says, to him who knows to do good, but doesn't do it, to him it is sin. So sin has a broad spectrum, and men sin all the time. Everybody does. Nobody can stand up and say, you know, I, I figured it all out. I know everything. No, you, you, you as a man or as a lady have a problem like everybody else. Everybody ha ha has to repent of something. Everybody has to be adjusted of something. Can you say amen? amen. Don't get quiet now. Shout more. We'll know you're very guilty of something. Amen. Stop sinning. Yes. Find a way to not do it. Get close to God. When you're working with God, you don't have time to sin. Lift your hand and say, Lord, make me... Oh, come on, I'm, trying, I'm working too hard. Whew. Lord, lift your hand and say, Lord, I, make me so busy, I don't have time for any foolishness in life. I, I don't have time for all that. I don't even have time. I'm busy. But first you had to do what? Have the plan? Know what to do? Hello? Have specific instructions from God? Yes? Let's pray right now. Say, Lord, in Jesus' name, forgive me of every sin. Forgive me of everything I was supposed to do that I didn't do yet. Please give me another chance. Thank you for your grace and mercy that you're going to help me in this foolish life. Make it a wise life. Make my life a wisdom life. Let the worst parts of me diminish and go away. Let the best parts of me come alive and flourish. And that happens, Lord, in your presence. Come on, tell them, in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 1611. I say, Father, cleanse me by your blood. In Jesus' name. And I'm going to work hard for you. And by that, I'm going to hear, well done my faithful servant enter into the joy of the lord yeah if you didn't do nothing you're not going to hear well done because you didn't well do hello if i'm going to hear well done then i well did i did well meaning i did something some people sit around you expect you get this mentality that everybody's supposed to help you or you just don't have to do anything who taught you that it was the devil and very evil, ignorant people. Lift your hands. Ignorant sounds like a bad word, but really what it means is to not know something. I don't know. Now, stupid means you know, but you don't do the right thing. That's the problem. But to be ignorant to something means you don't know about it. Hit yourself again and say, Lord, teach me everything. Teach me your ways, Holy Spirit. I want to walk with you. I want to walk in your power. See, I think I need this. We need this teaching first before we get into the miraculous and things like that. Because how are you going to go from a messy life and just jump over and expect to see miracles? Even someone that's doing miracles and flowing and all that, they, they built a life for that. They're not like you and you're not like them. And it's okay to receive. You want to receive from an anointed person. We want to flow in the miraculous. But the most important thing, really, as I've told you, if someone were to ask, what is the most important thing that I need to know is what am I supposed to do now? What am I supposed to do next? The one thing you need to know all the time is what to do next. Write this down. What do I do next? What do I do now? What is your plan? Write statements like that to yourself as questions. I mean to the Lord. Ask the Lord, but then ask yourself and say, do I, do I know his plan? And don't ever say you heard from God if he hasn't spoken. That's blasphemous. I, I, can, I can't. I had, I had a great pastor friend, a really uh, tremendous uh, servant of God. And he's come to work with me, and he was really chasing me for a prophecy, you know. <laughs> he was really chasing me for a prophecy. See, Pastor Isaac got it by the sovereign hand of God. He didn't have to ask me, and I didn't have to ask him if I can say it. The power of God fell, and that was... You can see the video. The video's there. I have the video, too. I, know, I guess they were online, but I also have the video. I'll send you the video. 
of that message. In fact, I made it so it's just going to start with your prophecy. That's where I start. And then I spoke the rest of the message. And that meeting was powerful. We did that in the city a week ago, a week and a half, two weeks ago. And uh, round two is Saturday. So I never make announcements like this, but I'll tell you now. Y'all need to come. Say, I'll come. Say, I'll come. Just get the thing and get to town. I hope you know where it is. Find your way in there and grab a seat. I think it's starting at 9 in the morning. I don't know. 10 in the morning. And it'll go to the afternoon. It's going to be a very powerful uh, meeting, yeah. And you can see me there and the other uh, people that will be in the meeting. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, sh please help me. Show me what to do. I need to know. And I need you to talk to me. Thank God for the prophets. But I need to hear from you directly also, my boss. Come on, tell them, my boss, please tell me what you want me to do in my life. Give me my job description. What do I do for you? What's my special gift? What is the thing that I'm so good at that I shouldn't be doing anything else but that? What's the thing that I'm so good at? That you've made me so gifted and talented in. What is it? Show me. Show me. Show me. Tell me that I could give my time to that. You can't give your time to everything and be successful at everything. You have to really choose one thing. Anybody that succeeds greatly, the mission or the gift that they have becomes an obsession. They become obsessed with it. They only want to do that. So I was, I, I was being uh, chased up, reminded all the time, like this man wanted to hear from God. And uh, yesterday we had a meeting in a, a quiet place. And finally the Lord began, I asked the Lord, please, uh, you want to you know, show us some things here. And some things began to flow. It was very powerful. But I gave specific, I saw myself last night speaking about this today in this meeting. And here I, I forgot about it totally, but it's coming back by the Spirit. Lift your hands and say, hallelujah, this is great. I saw this yesterday, but I, I would have forgot. But the Holy Ghost is showing me right now. I saw myself in the spirit and a vision saying this principle right here. Practical application prophecy. I want to call it PAP, pop. PAP, practical application prophecy. In other words, God will speak to you, not just some, you know, mystical thing, but he'll tell you, exactly what he wants you to do so i said for you this is what i heard for you this is what i heard for you this is what i see and it was directly connected to the work that we're doing god was speaking uh, confirming but also giving specific details and instructions on what we need to be doing what each person's part is how it's going to flow with them and they were so happy let me tell you they were so happy. We left. There was such a spirit of joy. They were so at peace. They were so empowered. They were so touched. And God spoke directly. You this, you this, and you this, me this. And they were asking about my vision and all that. And I began to tell for a long time, maybe two hours we were sitting there. And I began to, we began to have this great discussion. And I shared a lot of things, what I wanted to do, what I don't want to do. You know, you need to have times like that in your life. Put your hand on yourself again and say, Lord, please schedule this with me and schedule this with me and the right people. Bring me the right people. It may take a while. You know, that's why it says weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The Bible says, don't be weary in well-doing. Keep doing it for you'll reap in due season if you don't faint. Keep going. Don't quit. Hebrews 6.10 says, I'm not unjust to forget your labor of love because you're persevering and you keep ministering to the saints. You've been faithful to me and I'm going to bless you and reward you for it, the Lord said in Hebrews 6, 10. And you go down a few verses and you see it talks about Abraham. Abraham is always the prosperity word. When you see the word Abraham mentioned in the Bible, he's the father of faith, but he's also the father of prosperity. If you see God likening you to Abraham, something powerful is going to happen. 
When I received my call from the Lord, very specifically, I don't have time to share it in the testimony now, but I will in another event sometime. You'll hear it. Uh, but one thing the Lord said to me after appearing to me and showing me my calling, uh, I might as well just tell you quickly. The Lord Jesus appeared to me and he said, my son, I'm commissioning you and ordaining you to be my prophet to the nations. At the time, I had no idea what that was. We didn't grow up in a Christian family. I had just gotten saved. And that's where it began. So it started, my, my whole journey in Christianity started out with the Lord appearing to me and showing me the exact calling he has for me. So I knew from the beginning. I knew the end from the beginning. I knew where it was going to start and I knew where it was going to go. <laughs> and that's sovereign. That's a sovereign gift from the Lord. Oh my, I feel the anointing. I thank God. I thank God for it. And I've been all over the planet Earth, everywhere, all six continents. I think we've been to 32 countries now. Last count is 32 countries. And uh, there are many more to go to. There's 200 countries of the world. We want to go to as many as we can before we finish this thing. And we need to get on the program. Now, another thing, once you have the specific instruction, you want to make use of time and move fast. Move fast. Don't wait for nothing. Don't never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Get busy about it right now. You know, yesterday I, I met somebody and I, I told him today is a bit busy and it, it really is, in fact. But in the morning I was feeling stirred up like I wanted to tell him, also, see me today. Why? Because we're going to meet tomorrow, but I don't want to even wait till tomorrow. Hello? We plan for Monday, but Sunday's good. The quicker we can do things, the better. Yes? Now you need the right people. Yes, Lord. You need the right people. Yes. Lift your hands. Let's pray together. Father, bring the best people to me. Bring me to them. Bring them to me. They will find me and I will find them. The best of the best. The best destiny helpers. The best kind of people. The most gifted and talented people. The most resourceful people. The most influential people. You'll open great doors for me to bring me before great people. And like it says here in Proverbs 23, verse 1, you're going to sit with rulers and kings. Yes, we will. Isaiah 60 said, when, the, when your glory comes upon you, uh, the kings will come to the brightness of your rising and the forces of the Gentiles, the wealth of nations will come to you. Once you've arisen in the glory of God, this is a pattern. Read Isaiah 60. It's wonderful. And the thing, Lord, about us working on ourselves. And not just for everybody else is very important because you said in Song of Solomon, the lady, the beautiful lady there, the Song of Solomon in chapter 1, the beautiful lady there said, I've been made the keeper of the vineyards of others, but my own vineyard I have not kept, you see. So she was also responsible to take care of herself. Don't be too concerned with other people. Lift your hands, close your eyes, and say, Lord, put your presence all around me. Touch me. Visit my life. That everything that's wrong will be pushed away from me. Every person that's not conducive for what I am called to do will be happy. Well, they'll have their place. It's okay if they have a place, but my space needs to be the productive place. I need to rule from the palace. The kings will rule from a palace. The queen will rule from her palace. She'll have the things going. And there's no king or no queen that's a poor person. And why did God like us unto royalty? He said we're a royal priesthood. We're kings. Amen. Paul said that. But in Revelation 1.6, John said that we're kings and priests unto the Most High. And Jesus said in Revelation 5.12, I came to take it back from the devil that stole it from Adam. Everything, power and riches and wisdom and strength and glory and honor and blessing for the purpose of you, my chosen sons and daughters, to have dominion on the earth, to walk as royalty, to rule in dominion. This was my plan of action for all of you, says the Lord. Yet the devil has made people like lowly beggars. You see what happened? You see the problem? Lift your hands and say, I don't care what's around here. You got to get that attitude. Say, I'm not going to be like them. Even people that have tragedy, people tell me their tragedy. I say, it's terrible. You're a good man. You're a man of God. Why did that happen? 
but it will not happen to me. I'm charting the course by my words. Angels will hearken to the words that's spoken by the Holy Ghost. The angels are ministering spirits. They're, they're servants to us, uh, the heirs of salvation. They're, 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 they're there to serve us uh, and help us in our way, keep us in all our ways. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. They'll keep you in all your ways. They'll protect you. You'll tread upon serpents and scorpions, Luke 10, 19. But nothing shall by any means harm you. Because I am with you, says the Lord. And you're in my hand. And the enemy has no place in your life. We have to forcefully declare that. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say, I received that prophet. I received that. That's for me. Tell the Lord I agree with that word and it's for I'm taking for myself. Clap your hands to Jesus. It's okay. Do it. This is how to live. I'm telling you how to live a powerful life. So this is round one. Yes, this you got to get this first, I think. And then we'll get into other things. Amen. But specific instructions and direction. Is going to come from the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to give you a promise from the book of Isaiah. Chapter 48 verse 17. The prophet Isaiah spoke on the Lord's behalf. And the Lord spoke through him and said this through his prophet Isaiah. He said, I am the Lord your God who will teach you how to profit and lead you in the way you should go. I like to say that when you want a prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T, you need to hear the voice of God through the prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T. Why? Because the Lord is speaking his own mind as he's been doing here today. How many know this whole message is one long prophecy on how to live your life? I could say, thus saith the Lord, the beginning, and says the Spirit of the Lord at the end, and it was all a divine flow. Lift your hand and say, I receive it. And many people wouldn't expect that, but it's okay. I'm not like everybody else, and I thank God. I come from heaven. Praise the Lord. I have a friend in China. He's, he was the leader of the underground church. His name is Brother Yoon. He wrote the book, Heavenly Man, The Heavenly Man. His name is Brother Yoon, Y-U-N. You could look him up, Brother Yoon, Y-U-N. He was the number one leader of the Chinese underground church. And he told me personally through his interpreter, who was a Swedish man who's now gone to be with the Lord. And uh, he speaks Mandarin. Brother Yun doesn't speak English. He speaks Mandarin, a Chinese language. And he told me through his interpreter, he said, I said, how many people are getting saved in China through what you've done? He said, F we last count was 58 million people. 58 million people got saved in an illegal church that have to hide in houses and places where the government can't find them. Lift your hands. If they could win 58 million people underground, under the table, how much more us that have freedom to walk around should be winning souls left and right? Yeah. And what would it profit of man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? So number one is salvation. Yes, but after that, it's how to live. And God wants us to profit, yes? Let's all do this right now. In case there's, I don't have time to do an altar call. I have to go. But in case there's uh, anybody that wants to commit your life to Jesus, just say this prayer with me. Say, Lord, it's a free gift. He gives us a free gift. Take the free gift. It's, it's smart. Take the gift. Take, look at your name and say, take the gift. Look at your name and say, take the gift. Take the free gift. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior right now. I give my life to you. Forgive me of all sin, Father God. In the name of Jesus, forgive me of all sin. Take me unto yourself, into your royal family. I receive the gift of salvation. I receive forgiveness of sin. And I receive eternal life. In Jesus Christ's name, right now, amen. If you knew the Lord before, but you're not walking too well, commit yourself back to him and say, I'm not, say this, I'm not going to live in sin. I'm not going to live wrong. Say it, I'm not going to live in sin. 
I'm not going to live wrongly. I'm going to live for Jesus. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. Helping me in my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, the sweet presence of the Lord is here. I want to give you a promise from Isaiah 48, 17. I will teach you to profit. Someone say, I need to profit in my life economically. I need to profit in my life in every good way. I need to be very successful. I need to have everything I want to have. I need to be lifted up. I need to be made rich. Proverbs 10, 22 says, the blessing of the Lord will make us rich and add no sorrow with it. Put your hand on yourself. Say, I received that in Jesus' name. That's for me. Third John 2 said, Beloved, I wish, pray, and desire above everything else that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Number one was prosperity. Number two was health. And number three was having a, a, a good and brilliant mind. Lift your hands and say, I claim that promise. See, these are things we claim. Some people, they wonder why they have devils. But people that have devils in them, they never learned how to get rid of the devil. Hello? It's good to go to a deliverance service and we pull all the people and we lay them on the floor and people are screaming and shaking. I think, but I look sometimes and I think, okay, thank God for the prayer. But you could do that for yourself. If you are living a life speaking these things and being under the hand of God, that let me tell you, the devil has no place in your head, your heart, your body, your life, your house, your family, your environment. The devil is nowhere. I don't have demons. They, they're afraid of me. I walk into a church. If there was any in here, they're not here now. Let me tell you. How many could feel the atmosphere is a bit different than when I came? Can you feel it? The presence of the Lord. And Father, I, I leave that here. Lift your hands. Come on. You, you, don't even understand. you should be so happy about that. What a gift. What is it worth that I paid the price to walk with God and carry his glory? I walk into a place the devil takes off. Why? Because he sees Thomas, uh, kind of. I'm very handsome and very interesting as a man. But he sees who? The angels and the Holy Ghost. And he can't take them. <laughs> the man, maybe he could try to, you know. But when he sees God, whew, he runs. And the Bible says in James 4, 7, Submit yourself therefore unto God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Meaning he'll run away from you, terrified. Yes. Have you learned anything here? Yes. Lift your hands and say, I'm going to take it all and begin today. Don't put it off. Begin today, 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 today. Talk to God. Ask him to talk back to you. Say, God, adjust me, adjust me, fix me, connect me. Get me into the purpose that you've ordained for me. I can't stay where I'm at. I'm going to move I'm going to move forward from today. Very powerfully in the name of Jesus. Yes. Sir. Yes, it's going to say it's going to happen. Lift your hands say Holy Spirit, please I beg you, I cry to you, talk to me. Show me, show me. I don't want to stay without you. I don't want to stay without direction. I must hear your instructions. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Please, Father. I'm ready to walk with you. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do anything you tell me. But I must hear from you. What God can do through your life is so powerful. But first, he has to bless you. But I want to pray. I heard the, the Lord spoke to me this, last week about this. He told me, share Isaiah 48, 17, that I want to teach people how to profit. You going into business, you're going into a career, you're going in life, you're going to profit. You're going to do very well because you're listening to the prophet. I want everybody to package a holy seed in honor of Isaiah 48, 17. Right, in just a moment, okay? Someone could say, I... You could use the exact number, which would be, I guess, would be 5,000 shillings, uh, 4817. You could do 2,000, 1,000, or whatever. I want everybody to pray right now, okay? And those that are sowing a seed of 1,000 or more, I'm going to do something crazy for you. 
I'm going to give you a gift of my great book. And the foreword was written by the great Archbishop Harrison Nanga. Have you heard of him? Have you heard of the Apostle? He wrote the foreword. Three pages here about me and the impact of our ministry on the nation of Kenya. And those are sowing a thousand or more. I want to give you a gift of this as my gift. Uh, if you're sowing a thousand or more right now. Okay, online people watching, you can do it. You can send by M-Pesa. I can send you a digital copy. I had people write me. I don't want a digital copy. I'll take it, but I want the book. It's here. It's here. We can arrange for you to get it if you're near where we are. You know, the city we're in, you can, you can get it in hard print. This is a very powerful book about success in life, gaining success in life, profiting in life. So, I, uh, I, I, I was getting dressed and I was going through many suits, you know. And uh, I ended up choosing this one. I had some other ones I wanted to wear, but I thought I ended up wearing this one. Then when I reached in the pocket, there was money there. I didn't put it there. I don't know how. I thought, oh, this, this, this is better to wear this one. Because this one is already blessed. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. So, uh, how, many, how many could sow a thousand or two thousand shillings? If you feel led of the Lord, you can do that. But I also want to ask everybody right now to take a Miatano. Is that what you call it? Simba. You see Simba? And this was sitting in my pocket and I didn't know how it got there. So Simba found me. Don't look at me like that. Lift your hands. Don't look at me funny. I want everybody to push yourself. So in honor of Isaiah 48, 17. Now 481 and 70 uh, pence or whatever you'd call it would be a 500 seed. Right? And I think everybody could do that right now. I want you to just get that ready right now. And I know the church will also bless us and give us an offering. But I want, I want to give everyone a chance to sow right now. So if you have M-Pesa, can I give you a number? Can I give a number? 0706-164-191. I know people like to use M-Pesa. And if you have this here, you can sew it right now. I want to pray over you. I want to give you a chance to come to, to just lift it up before the Lord. I'm going to pray over your seed right now. In honor of Isaiah 48, 17. Can I tell you a principle? It's very powerful to sow money according to the scripture. And God taught me this years ago. A thousand times more. The scripture for that is Isaiah 60, 22. And also um, Deuteronomy 1, 11. I want to make you a thousand times more. To sow in honor of that scripture with a thousand. Amen. And I've done it so many times. In fact, I've done 111,000. In fact, I've done more than a million. In fact, last week, I sowed a nice seed. And I wasn't going to tell about it, but I think it might encourage somebody. And that's why I would say it. But last week I sold a, I sowed a seed of two million. Last week I did myself personally, not from organization, from my from my pocket, from my life. Lift your hands. Two million. I sowed. You sitting there looking at me like what? Have you left? Are you still here? Lift your hands up. People sitting there like this. Yeah, stay broke. It's okay. You'll see me one day and go, oh my God, this man, how blessed he is. I'm blessed already, but I'm being blessed more. But there's a reason why. You see that? Because I've charted the course. If you like poverty, you love the devil. Be honest. Can I rebuke it? Can I do it? Pastor, can I rebuke it? If you like poverty and you accept poverty, you are a servant of the devil. No one, no one will tell you that, but I will. 
living in poverty, living a low life, that you don't believe God. You, you, it's like you're telling God, I know you promised all this, but I can stay over here like this. God says, why? You like the devil? You like that mess? Hmm? Wednesday, I'm going with a great servant of God, great servant of God to the slums, and we're going to give out uh, help, help to about two, three thousand, over two thousand people there to help them. And man, I'm going to tell them while I'm there. God does not want you to live like this. I'm going to say it. Yeah, we love you. We want to help you. We want to give you things to live to help you. But God does not want you to stay here. Lift your hands. The ticket out of poverty is to work the biblical economic system. First, again, in the teaching, to do the plan, to live your life correctly, to know what you're good at, to work, to begin to move. Did you hear all that? And then to say, Lord, I need your hand to bless my life and take me out. And that comes with sowing seed. The testimonies of my friends in America, including myself, of great blessings come from seed we sowed. It wasn't by accident why someone became a millionaire. We did it by the seed, the law of the tithe, the law of the seed. Some people say, I, I, do I have to do that? You have to do it. If you want, now if you want to be blessed. But if you want to live with the devil, it's your choice. Hello? Come on, give me some response so I feel a little bit encouraged because I'm pushing hard here. Come on, say amen and smile at me and wave your hands and do something. Kick your feet. Do something. I break the power of the devil off of you in Jesus' name. I shouldn't even have to exert my energy to do that, but because I'm anointed, I'll say it. Amen. And the Lord loves us, right? You say, I love Jesus. God says, no, you don't. You don't want to do my word. You don't want to flow with me. You don't want to give nothing. You don't want to be a tither. Amen, Pastor. You don't want to you don't want to work you don't want to be aggressive you don't want to have faith in you then who are you are you a disciple no of course not but how many know god wants us to be disciples i'll never tell you anything negative ever in my ministry or my life without giving you the positive answer we can describe the problem and say this is the problem but now here it is here's the solution because God does not want you to leave you like that. If someone tells you like you're no good and you're just like that and the devil is all these evil. And some preachers preach like that stuff. Nonsense. I said nonsense. Rubbish. Give people the, the hope. Give people the way out. Amen. All right, I love you. I have to go. I want everybody to get your seed ready right now. If you could get one of these, or you can then paste the number. I Sorry, I didn't give you the number. 0706. Take your phone. And you could sow into this grace. People online, you could sow right now. God bless you. And you don't have to make it any amount. You could make it something big. You could make it something the Lord could speak to you any amount. Whatever he tells you, do what the boss says. Always follow the Holy Spirit. I'm just giving you a little bit of a, 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 a help, you know, to show you you can sow this in case you didn't know. And don't think you give 50 shillings and you gave a big offering. Get over that. Get to 500. Hello? Be a Tano. Get to 1,000. How do you say a 1,000? Mille. What's 1,000? If someone had a lot, they would take the, their hand in their pocket and throw them on the altar. Say, I have this. I can say it. I'm proud. I, I'm, I'm proud. I, I'm proud to have money because God has blessed me. Lift your hands right now. All right. So the number is zero seven zero six one six four one nine one. Pastor Isaac, my friend, I'm going to have fellowship with you on a, on another day. I'm going to get right in the car and I'm going to have to go in just uh, sixty seconds. The people are waiting for me in the city, and that's okay. Are you thrilled that I came to teach the Word of God? Have you heard a lot? Are you going to take action on it? Now I want to challenge you. Make it a thing in your life to be a seed sower. I was crying to God about seed and finally God showed me. It took a, little, a few minutes. 
But the Lord showed me how I could sow a seed of two million. And I did it last week. And I feel so happy. I feel so happy about it. Wow. Someone say, Lord, help me to be a giver like that. That I can receive the harvest. Can I tell you about giving? When you give, you, you, you give to yourself. You're sowing for your harvest. The smart person is the giver. The, not, the unsmart person is the person who wants to take everything. You don't get nothing back by taking. But you get everything back by giving. Just wave your hand to the Lord. Say, Lord, make me a giver. It'll change your life, okay? I don't have time to fight devils and wrestle with people over that. I just deliver the word of the Lord. God will back this up. And don't think about who you're giving it to all the time. Listen to God. Say, I will listen to God. And take it and put it there and sow it and forget about it. Walk away and say, Lord, I thank you for the harvest. Multiplied what I gave is coming back to me. Say that. Multiplied what... Man of God, if you want to have a prayer meeting, pray about economics. Say, we're going to have a prayer breakthrough about money. We're going to teach about it. We're going to teach people how to be blessed. And leave the other stuff alone. The stupid devil's in town anyway. He's over there somewhere. Leave him alone. Work on yourself. Are you hearing this? This is so powerful. Work on yourself. Lift your hands. Say, I need to know these things. I'll prophesy to myself. I'll come to pray. I'll prophesy. We'll talk to the atmosphere. We'll break the forces of the devil. We'll begin to receive money in our hands because we're speaking to it. You can speak to things. I speak to this seed in the name of Jesus. And I say it will be producing harvest back, multiplication back as we sow it. The angel just put this in my pocket. Look at that in these pants. I put these. How do you put your pants on and it has money in the pocket? How? I don't remember putting it there. I don't think it was. I, I, the angel came might have put it there. So. So. And I rebuke all these preachers that have abused people. They're going to answer to God. Am I teaching the pure gospel? Lift your hands. Am I teaching the pure truth? Do you feel the spirit? Do you feel the spirit of the Lord? Are you hearing the word? Are you hearing the prophecy? Are you hearing, are you hearing me from my heart? Are you hearing? It's truth I'm telling you to help you get out. And some people think, well, if I give, am I helping them? You can't help us. How much do you have? How much do you have to change our life? Can you give me $10 million? Yes or no? Today. No? Then relax. Your seed is for you. You sow it into the anointing, and now it's going to come back. Multiply to you. Do you believe that? And the Bible says what? The Bible says what? Give, and it shall be? Yes? Is Jesus a liar? Who's the liar? The devil and anybody that believes him. I'm going to put, <laughs> I'm putting this right on my Bible. All right, get your seed ready. Are you using the phone? Are you using m -Pesa? Did I tell you the number? Or did I keep interrupting the, the number? 0706, please, Lord, help me say it. 164-191. 0706-164. 1 one nine one. That's the ampesa to sow a seed. Whatever the Lord is telling you to do. Amen. And thank God for this church going to higher levels. Father, I prophesy, as I said in the city in the prophecy, everything's going to break loose. The miraculous is going to flow. Great things are going to happen from this work. And thank God for this tent here that's here right now that we could be here today. This is wonderful. And Father, bless this house. Bless these people in Jesus' name. Lift your hands up to the Lord. I bless, I bless you in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be empowered. I want to hear testimonies. By the way, 
I feel like I sometimes I'm I'm really extended my energy and, and really pushing hard and working hard. Uh, let it never be in vain. Take advantage of what God has said and work it. And let us see. Let your pastor see. Let mama, his wife, see. Let the people here see. And let the people that know you see the change in your life. And say, God, you must have done something different. Come on, clap your hands. It's okay. <laughs> something happened to you. Let us see it. I want to hear about it. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor Isaac, can you come? I love you. Can you blow me a kiss? Thank you very much. That was, can I have one more? Oh, okay, that's a little bit I feel it. Now. I need some love. I need some love. Can we blow Jesus one right now? <sighs> Wonderful Jesus, we love you. Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, fairest of 10,000, bright and morning star. Come on, come on, praise him. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega, Bishop and Overseer of our souls, the Friend of Life, the Day Spring, the Day Star, the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, the fairest of 10,000, the soon and coming King, Jesus, the Amen, the Faithful and the True, the Rider on the Horse, the victorious king. He is our Lord. Come on, praise him right now. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we love you. Keep clapping, keep clapping. Last night, I put on some worship music in the middle of the night. I was up the whole night praying, and I just began to sing some very soft, not praise songs, but worship songs to the Lord. And I said, I like the atmosphere. I like you. I love you. I want to be with you. Come on. We need to cultivate a life of praise. Father, I prophesy that in this church and in this house and in this city are going to be the best musicians, the best singers, the people that carry the presence of the Holy Ghost, the movements of heaven on the earth, and the miraculous will flow. I'll cover that in the next session when we get to do it. The miraculous power of the Holy Ghost is going to move. Miracles of creative power are going to move in this land. We're going to begin to see people delivered. We're going to see also people raised up to become successful business people. Great preachers, great evangelists, great teachers, great intercessors, great pastors, great apostles, great prophets, great people. We're going to see it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Uh, if you love him, we love you, 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 we love you. In the mighty name of Jesus. All right, just for one minute, if someone has a seed, you can just bring it to the altar. I'll let Pastor tell you how to bring that. If you heard that, you can just get your seed, come and drop it here. Just begin to do that right now. Just come and if you have your seed, just begin to drop it here. If you're using your phone, you can do that in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Right now, just come, come, come. Somebody come. Break the ice. Break the ice. Thank you, sister. Others, come, come, come. Just begin to walk and drop it here. Where's your Hallelujah. seed? Come on. Yako, in the name of Jesus. And you have the number. You have the number to use. Yeah. And... The Lord bless you very much. If you have sent through the phone, please lift up your hand. Mm -hmm. 